Okay, cool. But yeah, you said uh, there's uh, three separate cooling loops, right? Yeah, so uh, the, the three systems or components that are in the car want to be at three different temperatures. And uh, those systems are the engine or the powertrain, the power electronics. The power electronics is a, basically a system where you take the uh, uh, inverters, so the battery is a DC uh, supplier of power, the, uh, mo the motors are AC uh, components, and you have to invert that from DC to AC mm -hmm. um, in order to use, and when you do uh, regenerative braking, uh, you also need to be able to go from AC to DC. Yep. So there, that loop wants to be in the 75C range or somewhere there below, and then the battery wants to be somewhere. Oh really, 75C? Yeah, yeah. That's how hot they can get, so that for a life, stress and all those components, we try to keep that number down below 75 C. -ish. Um, and then the battery wants to be somewhere around 30, 40 C. Mm -hmm. So 30, 40 C, 75 C, and 90 C. You can imagine if you put the battery in the engine loop, yep. you don't want a lithium battery yet. <laughs> it, <laughs> Cook it, the battery. It's right, the engine can get to 125 ish C in, in a lot of cases. So um, there's not a, a want to mix those components. So yeah, we have three separate loops. My job is the hybrid component loop. So there's a one guy that works on the engine cooling loop and my team is responsible for the power electronics loop and the battery loop. You had mentioned that the, uh, for the, uh, or someone had mentioned that for the battery coolant, if it's a very hot day, you can tap AC as well? Yep, yep. So what ends up happening is, uh, I actually just went to a uh, validation trip at the beginning of this week. Mm. So we flew down into Colorado, drove yep. from Colorado to, uh, or from Denver to Telluride, Telluride to Flagstaff, and from yep. Flagstaff to Las Vegas where it was about 112 degrees C. Yep. But yeah, in order to keep that battery at that 30 to 40 C range, we tapped into the car's main AC system in order to get some help to keep those temperatures down. So. Yeah, it's uh, it's very necessary for this car if you want the battery to live uh, mm -hmm. throughout the warranty period and, and sometime thereafter. So yeah, and they're pretty efficient. I mean, you're not going to make more heat than you are going to cool it by using no, them. <laughs> no, no, these are super efficient batteries. Um, if anything, the ambient plays more of a part than the actual use of the battery. So if you take this exact same battery, deplete it yep. in, a, in a temperature range like where we are today you would never get into the 40-ish C range. So, Interesting. Yeah, it's, I thought they'd get really hot. No, no, they're very, very efficient. Um, and they probably are even more efficient on a smaller platform. So uh, just the fact of the, the matter that the car weighs, I don't know, upwards of three, 4,000 pounds, somewhere like that. Yeah. Um, even, even with pulling that kind of load, it's very efficient. So yeah, pretty proud of it, actually. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. So for those, uh, I guess, battery, uh, I mean, there are going to be cases where you just sit in the parking lot for kind of months at a stretch. I don't, I don't know why you would do that, but yeah, I mean, that's a possible use case. And obviously, you can't just sit there and have the battery cool itself for the whole time. So I mean, there's kind of a yeah, underlying. A, is yeah. that a customer education issue? Or? Yeah, it is. It is. For the most part, people are going to want to plug these things in. We do try and do some things. Um, depending on where the car is, mm -hmm. but uh, as you can imagine, we don't have infinite energy yep. <laughs> right? to, to do that sort of thing, but we definitely try and take care of uh, scenarios where the guy, excuse me, uh, lives in Phoenix, goes into the mall, he's going to be parked there for eight hours, maybe he works there, maybe he's just shopping. We want to make sure that both of those customers don't come back to a car that's, you know, melting, or whatever yeah. the case may be. So um, there are some things that we do in that arena, but for the most part, our biggest um, our biggest uh, recommendation is always plug it in, mm -hmm. always plug it in because that will be the um, it's good for charging, obviously, yep. and it's also good for 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 your battery as well because the battery thermal management system uh, is is capable of being operated as as long as there's a plug in. So totally different algorithm. It's kind of like a laptop. When it's plugged in, it does one thing. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay. We, and we, knowing that this is our first time at the rodeo for this type of car that does all of these things, right? We know we did the EV1, but yeah. this thing is a completely different animal uh, mm -hmm. because there's so many things that we have to take into account. But um, it, it's exciting, and yeah, we we've, we've tried to think of everything that you guys do. <laughs> Um, yeah, we're going to miss some stuff, and that's where hopefully you guys give us some great feedback on, on what we can do to make it better. So, yeah. yeah. So do you have a, yeah, actually uh, someone had mentioned, maybe it was uh, Nick from OnStar. He had said uh, 
one of the cool things with the OnStar is you can get instant feedback now on your development stuff as well. So even internally, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, we're taking great advantage of that. Uh, one of the things that's going to be interesting for me to see, since my team is responsible for the battery cooling algorithm, is what are my average battery temperatures riding around, right? And mm -hmm. Am I going to run into issues because there are some people that live in an area where their battery may want to live at a hotter temperature than we desire? Um, and it'll be good to know on average how we're cooling those systems off. So yeah, we have OnStar that we can look up some of that data. The other smart thing about it is these things can be connected to smartphones and you can look at it and say, hey, mm -hmm. um, it's charging right now and it's gonna be done at 6 a.m. and you can basically load up an app. I think iPhone is one of the, the places that has an app today. But you can uh, load one of those things up and say at nine o'clock in the morning, I'm gonna be done. Yep. But, uh, how, much, how much vehicle telemetry do you have access to that I guess, because customers will probably just have some basic high level stuff so you don't get confused. But Yeah, um, there's some stuff we don't want to put out there <laughs> because it obviously may, may or may not be proprietary. Yep. Um, again, we, we earlier, earlier alluded to the fact of company electrons, right, that yep. actually go into the battery pack. I don't think that in and of itself is uh, proprietary, but there are some things that uh, we don't want to confuse the customer with yep. on how many kilowatts of energy have I um, Put, put in. into the battery pack. Mm -hmm. While that may not be confusing, um, it may be something that the customer's not even interested in seeing. Mm -hmm. If so, they can you know tack on a meter. I know guys that have meters that they plug onto their electrical uh, centers. To Let the hackers figure it out. Themselves. Exactly. <laughs> if they want to know that bad, then by all means, do what you can to figure it out. But uh, I don't think there's any secrets. There's just some yep. things that that obviously give us a competitive advantage in, sure. that, in that area. So. Um, yeah, I, I also don't know exactly what all information will be available, mm -hmm. but uh, um, if there's some things that, that a typical customer would like to see, I think things like blogs and those types of things would help us to figure out. Because this is our first time. Yep. We've never done a smartphone and a plug-in car at the same time, right? So we have no idea the level of information that uh, that people would like to see. So Is this we, the first time you've had to have a car where you've had a car to develop with uh, a remote telemetry or like how before? Like for a, a hybrid application, how would you find out how the battery temperature is? Would you have to download it from the car's computer, or did they have some telemetry before? I don't know of any. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when the when the Yukon and the uh, Tahoe came out, they both had OnStar in them, right? Yep. Um, I just don't know that we were that well vested into using that information for our benefit. Mm. Um, whereas on this car and the battery system on that car was an air-cooled system, oh, it, it. Uses, it used the cabin air to try and figure it out. Well, we know it was going to have to live pretty much at the temperature of the cabin or some temperature there hotter only because of the heat that the, the battery was actually rejecting. But um, in this case, because we can do so much, we can basically make it be one temperature, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's going to be important to know what that battery is doing at all times um, just so that we can make sure that it, the, the warranty and the performance uh, are, are both there uh, from a from a customer perspective. So. Cool. Anything else? Plenty more, but I won't keep you too long because I know you have uh, <laughs> other stuff you need.